Hi everyone, this is John Dickinson, Director of Motion Graphics for Boris FX, and in this tutorial I'm going to introduce you to Sapphire Effect Builder and discuss with you how I used it to create this preset. Now I'm using After Effects, but the Effect Builder is available in a variety of hosts including Premiere Pro, Avid Media Composer, DaVinci Resolve, Autodesk Flame, and now in Sapphire 2020.5, Nuke and Vegas Pro have been added to that list. So no matter which of those is the host that you use, the workflow I'm going to show today will be exactly the same. To apply S Effect in After Effects, I'm going to use the Effect and Presets panel just by typing in Effect, and you'll find Sapphire Effect in the Sapphire Builder category. I'm going to double click to apply that to my solid. And the first thing to do is to come over and click Load Preset, which will launch the Sapphire Preset Browser. And since S Effect is all 270 plus Sapphire effects rolled into one plugin, we can browse all 3000 presets in one spot instead of having to switch to individual effects and browse only that effects presets. And that's a real time saver. There's also a special category for builder effects. And in here are 240 pre built effects ready to be used in your work or purely as inspiration. I'm going to use this one here, Flames, just by double clicking. And once that's loaded, just come back up to the top of the effect and I'm going to click on Edit Effect. And this launches the Effect Builder interface where we can modify the preset. We can browse and load other presets directly from inside the interface by choosing Insert Node from Preset. If I just double click on the Aurora category, this will show me all of the Aurora presets. Then I can double click a preset to load that into the effect stack. You can see that's placed that as a node underneath the previously selected node. You can even add entire builder presets directly from the interface just by choosing Node Insert S Effect. I'm going to search for a specific one named Dreamer. This is also based on Sapphire Aurora. Just double click. And this places that node tree just to the left of the existing node tree. Nothing's connected at the moment. And I can patch that into my existing setup or simply delete these and just patch this in to this effect. And choosing clean up selection just to keep that organized. If I knew I only wanted part of this preset, I can just delete the nodes that I don't want. Once again, clean these up and I can commence my work from there. If you didn't want to use a preset, you can start right from the ground up just by choosing an effect from the components list. I'll just type in Aurora, double click to add that to the workspace, and now I've got the default effect as a starting point. So Sapphire Effect Builder makes it easy to explore the effects and presets and is by far the best way to leverage all of the great Sapphire content. So let's go ahead now and look at a breakdown of one of the new presets I created for Sapphire 2020.5. So once again, I'm going to click Edit Effect just to launch the builder, and let's walk through this effect. The first thing I'm going to do is click on Preview Selected Node, and by doing that, only the node that's selected or any nodes above that will be previewed. So if I click on the first one, Background Color, you can see everything turns black. Now this is the Sapphire Color Effect, that's in the Tools category. And I've set the color to black. And the reason I've done that is because this is a background preset. And by making the first effect black, if you happen to apply this to footage or to an image, then you're going to get the expected result. Notice also that I've changed the node name, just giving this the name background color. And you will notice this node with a number of the background presets that ship with Sapphire. Next effect in the stack is Aurora. Now Aurora can be found in the render category. And Aurora is my number one favorite generator effect. And the reason for that is it has these really nice swirling settings. I've set swirl speed X to minus 0.2. So it's swirling quite slowly. The other key setting is the softness. You can see I've set that down to zero. And the reason I've set that to zero is because I wanted some really nice sharp high contrast lines to act as the base for blur motion. 
and blur motion is what's being used to give this really nice volumetric raise effect. You'll find blur motion in the blur and sharpen category. And you can get these really lovely rays also using sapphire rays. But this effect also comes with a couple of parameters that make it a little different, which is these from rotate and to rotate settings. Watch what happens when I change this setting. You can get this lovely rotation to those rays. Notice though that if I choose view show checkerboard, that once I've applied this effect, we can now see the transparency. That's because I've adjusted the to Z distance and from Z distance parameters, and that's what's giving us the rays. So that's something to watch out for. We're actually going to add an effect a little bit later down in the stack to fix this problem. The next effect in the stack is parallax strips. You can find parallax strips in the distort category. And parallax strips is a great way to add some geometric detail and depth. And this really contrasts with these soft volumetric rays. I've used mostly the default settings for this, just adjusting end strips and also the depth parameter. And this is another Sapphire effect that has automatic animation. You can see strip speed is set to 0.4, which makes these just gently drift to the right. I'm going to turn off my checkerboard for now. The next effect in the stack is pixel sort. You can find pixel sort in the stylize menu. Just move to a more representative frame. Now pixel sort sorts pixels along lines. And you can see when applied here, it results in these lovely pink lines shooting out over the black areas. I've changed the sort angle to minus 45. The default setting is zero. And while this looks good, I think it actually kind of overpowered the parallax strips. I much preferred having the pixel sort shooting out at an angle. Now we can see both the pixel sort and the parallax strips really clearly. The next effect in the stack is glow, one of the most famous sapphire effects, which you can find in the lighting category. And this is adding a lovely soft glow, but you may have noticed that I've actually ported everything above pixel sort, including pixel sort, into the matte port for glow. Let me just disconnect that. Now you can see the glow is really blown out. Now I could control this using the threshold setting for glow, but I found that I was getting a slightly different result by using the effect stack so far as a matte for the glow. And this is one of the real powers of Sapphire, being able to patch combinations of live effects in this way. Once you start getting used to the flexibility of working with effects in Sapphire Builder, it's pretty hard to work any other way. Next effect in the stack is halftone. You can find halftone in this stylized menu. Notice how when I selected that, everything went black and white. So to combine the look so far, I've used sapphire layer. Sapphire layer can be found in the composite category. And sapphire layer is useful for combining a foreground with a background using various blend modes. You can see here I've used soft light. So the background is the look up until the glow. You can see that's patched into background. And the foreground is the same set of effects, but halftone is sandwiched in between, and then it's ported into the foreground. So combining those with the soft light blend mode gives you this look. There's also options for foreground and background, and you can use these options to fine tune how the foreground and background are combined together. Now notice how if we turn on show checkerboard again, We still have this problem with the alpha channel popping through. So to fix that, we can use the set alpha effect. Set alpha is one of the tools. I'm going to click and just drag that down into the workspace. So set alpha is going to be part of the background stack because that's where we have the problem. So if I just patch glow into set alpha and then set alpha into background. At the moment we have no result. That's because we have to use a layer to replace the alpha channel. 
So I'm going to use the color effect. It doesn't matter what color it is. I'm just going to patch that into the matte port for set alpha. Click on set alpha and change the matte use to alpha. And now you can see that our checkerboard is no longer visible. That's a really good way to fill up those holes in the alpha channel. Just going to select everything, right click and choose clean up selection. Let's maybe put this guy over here. So I might just come up to blur motion and once again, just turn off show checkerboard and also turn off preview selected node. Just want to see how this might look if I adjust those rotation settings. So let's say that we wanted to save this as a preset. The first thing to do before you save a preset is make sure that only the parameters that you want to be visible in the host are checked inside the builder. And you can see because this is based on a preset that most of these are already set up. If I come over to Aurora as an example, you can see only some of these parameters are checked. Start and end color. When you apply an effect, you'll notice that all of the parameters are checked. So come up to the top checkbox and click it. That will deselect everything. And then only select the parameters that you want to see in the host. Now we added set alpha. So I'm actually going to uncheck this because I don't need to see output pre mult in the host. And also color. I don't need to change the color. So once that's set up, we come over and click save. We can give this a name, make yourself the author and give it a description. Maybe choose from some of the available tags to make it easier to search for later. Or to make it even easier to find, just check the star button to make this one of your favorites. And there's also an option to export where you can export this preset to share with other Sapphire users since all Sapphire presets are compatible with other hosts. I'm just gonna cancel that for now and click OK. And notice down here in the effect control panel that we only have the parameters that were checked inside of the effect builder. And this makes it easier for you to zero in on just the settings that you want to change. But it's also really useful when you're sharing this preset and you only want to make certain parameters available directly in the host. Okay, so hopefully that basic introduction has given you an idea of the power of Sapphire Effect Builder and enough confidence to include it like I do in your everyday use of Sapphire. Thanks for watching and be sure to visit borisfx.com to take a free trial of Sapphire and to see more videos about all of the Boris FX products.